Unrestricted Warfare is a military strategy book written by two Chinese Air Force colonels in 1999. The book explores how countries like China can defeat a geopolitical superpower like the United States through other means of warfare, such as political and economic warfare. One of the book's authors, Major General Qiao Liang, spoke about why China has a competitive edge over the United States and how the Internet gave China the opportunity to take the lead. His observations and understanding of the United States and its democratic process reveal the Chinese Communist Party's mindset and should give West a warning. Hello, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. I don't know exactly when General Chao gave the talk, but it was posted on May 21st, 2020. The title was America Invented the Internet, but the time belongs to China. I'm by no means promoting his views, but I think his talk provides us insight not just into the minds of the China's military strategists, but also into those of its think tanks and officials, and the West needs to know where they're coming from. The main thesis of General Chao's talk is that America's decline is due to its own political system, values, and the arrival of the Internet. Please take a look. Shiloh,和中国没有关系,就像美国的逆差贸易逆差跟中国没有关系是一样的。美国的衰落是因为时代使然。有很多人说今天这个世界发生变化的原因是美国的衰落和中国的崛起,其实这是一个现象。这并不
，效率之间越来越显示出一种差异来。我们对于隐私的不那么在意，我们对个人权利的经常的有一些轻视，啊，甚至轻蔑。可是恰恰在这方面，我们迎迎合了互联网的某一个方面。所以说，中国的发展反而在这方面变得很快了。你比如说，中国所有的酒店，在它的走廊的尽头都有一台探头摄像机；我们的高速公路上，隔一段就有探头；我们的每个十字路口都有探头。这些东西在西方国家看来，你是在侵犯我的隐私的。可是对于中国人来讲，这个隐私，我们是可以让渡的。由于让渡了这部分隐私，使社会的发展甚至社会的安全，得到了空前的提升。I think it's difficult for the CCP and officials in the communist system to understand why a country is stronger when its people are happier and their rights and property respected. In their minds, only state GDP growth and impressive infrastructure indicate a strong nation. Also, I don't think the Chinese people willingly give up their privacy or their rights. They have no choice. The CCP forces it on people, and once people get used to it, those in power will claim. You don't need this right. It's meaningless to you. Today, we see that Chinese people have a large camera surveillance system, a large camera. In our daily lives, we are almost indifferent to it. We have no feeling for it. In such circumstances, it does not cause harm to your personal privacy. If it does not cause harm to your personal privacy, it is no big deal. The Western countries have gone this far. It is necessary to fight with its rules and its values and its values. 对于中国来讲，我们几乎不需要斗争就直接走到这一步。那么谁走得更快呢？显然，中国今天在互联网时代，中国人走得更快。General Chao explicitly explained why the internet has empowered authoritarian regimes by giving them the best tool to control people, and that with the help of the internet, the defeat of the United States is possible. 这样一种深刻的变化。是美国人在发明互联网的时候，他并没有真正意识到的。互联网是六亲不认的，他不会由于你是互联网的发明者，而对你美国格外的网开一面。你跟不上趟，就是跟不上趟。你不能由运用互联网带来效率，那就是带不来效率。他不会独独给美国留下后门，这就是美国今天的问题。Authoritarian systems always prioritize the state over the individual. Individual rights, freedom, or happiness must give in to national strength and a state agenda. An authoritarian regime doesn't trust its people and wants to make decisions for its people. Here is the ultimate picture the general paints for our collective future. I myself predict w h 不穿衣服的人会是个怪物。如果全世界的人都把衣服脱光之后，那么穿衣服的人就是个怪物。当所有的隐私都大白于众人面前的时候，隐私就不再是隐私。There's no question that General Chao is brilliant. If you think about it, he may have even spelled out the predicament that the CCP finds itself in. In terms of the metaphor he just described. I think that the communist regime forces everyone to take off their clothes, but they are the only ones who don't. The CCP leaders and officials will never release their private information to the public, so people will quickly see that they are in fact the monsters. Actually, I think people have already figured out. America needs to realize that its founding principles, freedom, democracy, and human rights, are what protect it from being run over by communism. These principles are Americans' fundamental source of strength, our shield, and we can't take them for granted. Chinese New Year is coming. Next Tuesday, February 1st, we'll say goodbye to the Year of the Ox and welcome the Year of the Tiger. So if you were born in 1926, 38, 50, 62, 74, 86, 98, or 2010, you are probably a tiger. Tiger in Chinese is Hu. Ox is new. So here's new and Hu. Don't they look like a cow and a tiger? I think they do. Here are the two videos I recommend. One is on the high speed rail and the other is on Xi Jinping's motivation
or martial unification of Taiwan. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon.